Um, so let me go into this and then how do I go into mod view? Well, whatever. Um, oh, that's right, the sword. There we go. Okay, so um, uh, I wanted to dive into a little bit more detail about how things would actually get encoded into ASCII. Um, so we talked about sort of the big picture last time that, okay, so ASCII was originally seven bits, an eighth bit got added, that gets you 256 things. So what I have here, and I'll put this up on Canvas for you guys to reference, um, is the, the list of printable characters. So this isn't all of them. Uh, in particular, uh, I didn't put any of the extended ASCII stuff on here. So this, the, the like uh, Latin letters with the accents or some of those things, I just put sort of the, the, the front half, if you will, of the, of the table um, that has the, um, the sort of, you know, basic Latin characters. Um, and I also didn't put any of the, the stuff that's not a printing character. So, uh, so you'll notice that the list starts here with uh, hex two zero or decimal 32. Uh, there are things above that in the list. They're just not printable characters. Um, there's one of them that we'll talk about uh, today, which is the very beginning one, the, the one that's all zeros, which we call the null terminator. And that is important uh, for encoding strings because it gives you a way to tell, to determine if the string is, has ended. Uh, basically. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just kind of look through what we've got, right? So we've got uh, probably the usual suspects in terms of letters and numbers and a couple of, you know, some symbols, um, you know, your punctuation and whatnot. Um, and then we've got, uh, notice, two separate encodings for upper and lower case. Right, and that makes sense uh, because how else would you be able to tell the difference if they weren't encoded separately? Um, so the, uh, the whoever decided to do this put the uppercase first and the lowercase second. They could have obviously done it in the other order, but that's what the standard is. So that's what we've got. Um, and then um, so for uh, for number two zero here um, for. It's kind of hard to draw a space, right? Because it's like nothing. Uh, so uh, when I, when I say glyph there, that's what the symbol would look like. Uh, and for the space, obviously, there's no good way to to do that. Uh, the rest of them should be pretty obvious. Um, the uh, the other one that's a little ambiguous, so I, I put it in parentheses here, is the underscore. Right, so not a dash, but it's you know the dash that's at the bottom of the line rather than at the middle. Um, the rest of them should be pretty obvious what they are. Um, you know, you've got your, let's see, your comma here, a single quotation mark, um, double quotation marks, um, you know, etc. Okay, but in particular, why don't we look at the the letters? Okay, so just look at the capital A and the lowercase a, or you know, and then uh, so on down the line. What do you notice about that? Anything interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're the same, with the exception of one bit. Okay, so there's a couple ways we can notice that. One would be like you just look at the bit pattern. So let's look at capital A versus lowercase a. Notice that they're the same except there's a bit in this position that's a zero for the uppercase and a one for the lowercase, but otherwise everything's exactly the same. Okay, um, another way to see that is look at the hexadecimal for each of them. 
it's off by how much? Two zero in hex, okay, which would be how much in decimal? 32, okay, right, because it's two in the 16th place and, and nothing in the ones place. Uh, right, so that was really smart to um, whoever designed this, uh, you know, it's probably a group of people, um, that, okay, uh, that two things. One, to go from lowercase to uppercase, it's a set amount every time, right? In this case, it happens to be hexadecimal two zero. I think what was really smart was the fact that it's a single bit that gets flipped uh, to change from lower to uppercase. Okay, it's just that, what, third bit from the left? Um, so that, I think, was a pretty smart move, okay? Um, what this means is if, you know, if you're doing real low-level programming, um, you know, if you've got something in, you know, you're typing in Word, and it does some of that autocorrection stuff for you. So, like, if you start a sentence and you forget to capitalize the letter I, or you forget to capitalize whatever you're going to start the sentence with, it, it corrects those things and makes them uppercase if they're supposed to be. Kind of handy. Yeah, occasionally annoying, but mostly handy. Uh, well, how is it doing that under the hood, right? It's just converting from one encoding to the other. Um, yeah. So uh, in some program, well, I think pretty much every programming language, there's also a, um, <clears throat> there's some functions that can do conversion between upper and lower case for you. Okay, so if you have, for example, something that's written in all uppercase or mixed case, and you want to make it all lowercase, then there's a function that basically just goes through and reads letter by letter and says, okay, is this uppercase or lowercase? If it's uppercase, make it lowercase, otherwise don't touch it. Uh, and all it's doing is scanning through one byte at a time. Uh, because how many bytes does each letter or symbol on in ASCII take? Bits or bytes? Yeah, so eight bits means one byte. Um, and so that's really nice. It's super compact. Now, as we talked last time, right, there's a big limitation here, namely that uh, we can only encode 256 things if we uh, restrict ourselves to using 8 bits. And that's fine if you want to type English, and that's it. Um, but if you want to do anything kind of more exotic, so to speak, then you're... Uh, you very, very quickly find yourself uh, short on letters. Okay, so what I thought we would do next is um, let's take the, uh, the table and um, uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let me see how I want to do this. Let me put that here and that there. And then in OBS, I want to do entire screen. Okay, that's not going to work. Um, well, okay, we'll do it this way. Um, so those of you guys who are at home, you'll only be able to see the, uh, I don't know why this is coming through so small. Sorry, I'm trying to do this so that the guys online can see okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I need to transform and fit to screen. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, so what I've got here is I've got uh, just basically a fancy text editor. 
Okay. And um, then I kind of need the ASCII table. So, um, you know what? Let me just put that onto Canvas real quick. And then you guys can download it. <laughs> okay. So let's go to Canvas. CSC 101. I thought I had done this already, but I guess not. Nope, looks like not. All right, files, notes. Oh, I did. It's already there. God, I'm an idiot. All right, so let's go to modules and add that file. So we want the file. We want ASCII tables. Okay. Um, so if you go to Canvas uh, now and then in the, the list of modules, you know, the home page, just scroll down and on, in the encodings module, I just added the ASCII tables. Um, so those of you who have a, a gadget with you, pull that up real quick just so that we've got uh, that uh, handy. And uh, you guys are going to have to look some stuff up for me on the, um, on the, the table. Okay. So let's take a string, okay, and so a string is a, well, string of letters, okay, to form, uh, well, letters or, or other symbols. Okay, so if we put, let me just type a string. Something like hello world is a string. And um, in most programming languages, or like, say, for example, C, the quotes are not actually part of the string. Okay, so the quotes just denote, hey, I'm about to start a string and then end a string. Okay, so what we want to do is encode this thing in ASCII. And uh, then if we. Uh, um, yeah, okay, so let's encode this thing in ASCII. All right, so first off, how many bytes is it going to take to encode this thing? How many, okay, so remember, the quotes don't count. They're not part of it. Um, they could be if we wanted them to be, but we won't make them part of it for this example. So how many bytes is it going to take to encode this thing? Call. Uh, okay, so why 12? So there's five for the word hello. There's another five for the word world. Okay, so that's 10. 11 for the space. 12 for the exclamation mark. And if we were going to be doing this in a actual programming language, it would actually be 13 because we'd have to put a null terminator at the end. Okay, so 12 or 13, depending on how you want to count. Okay, the null terminator, like I said, just tells a programming language that, hey, the string's over. Um, but uh, for the assignment that's on Canvas, I think I didn't include the null terminators just to kind of keep it from getting more complicated than it needed to be. We'll go ahead and throw in the null terminator here just for giggles. Um, so, okay. So if we're going to encode this thing, we got to do it basically one letter at a time, right? So this part basically is just look stuff up off the sheet. So what is capital H on the sheet in hex? Four, four eight, okay. And in binary, what is that? Okay. All right, so that is H. Okay, and then how do we do the rest of it? It's all going to be the same thing, right? Just one letter at a time. Is it kind of a pain in the butt that you have to look things up off the table? For now, yes, but, you know, I was told that when I came to Wabash College, I would be teaching men. So, how many of you guys play Team Fortress 2? Anybody? Okay, so you know the, the videos that they make of the different characters, like, that. it's not actually part of the game, but so the lore that goes with it. 
And then Heavy's like, I was told that I would be fighting men. No. Yeah. They may be smarter than me. Th this may be true. But I have yet to see them outsmart Bullet. Okay, anyway. Um, Team Fortress 2. Yeah. So, it's kind of an old game now, which is sort of funny, because I think it came out in, what, 07? 08, somewhere in there? Um, finally, and yeah. Huh, anyway. Um, okay, so we just got to continue and do this. Uh, uh, in fact, why don't I put the, uh, the actual letter at the front here? Maybe that's a little bit more convenient. Um, we just got to do it one letter at a time. So what's lowercase e in hex? Four, five. Yeah, lowercase. So it should be six, five, right? And so notice he said four, five. And then he said, oh, wait, lowercase. And so I almost, I was about to hit the six before he said anything, right? Because I know the trick that to convert back and forth, it's easy. Just, you know, uh, subtract or add a two in the uh, second position. Okay. All right. And then what is that in binary? Pray tell. And you shouldn't have to look it up off the sheet. Uh-huh. Yep. Right. You guys should be pretty snappy with that by now. And if not, um, well, okay, normally there's a stick right here that I could use to beat you with it, but somebody has moved my stick. Um, yeah. There's even a two-meter stick, which therefore is like, enough to beat you and social distance at the same time it's great but somebody has absconded with my stick so oh well um okay so yeah this part gets a little lame right because what are we going to do for the rest of it the same thing just letter after letter now the l that's next is kind of nice because we get to recycle that right so what is lowercase l oops huh, copyright <laughs> Okay, what is L? Six zero? Six C. Okay, sorry. All right, and then in binary, what would that be? Well, this part's the same. And then C is like 12, so that would be an 8 and a 4 and nothing else. Right? Okay, now because we had that twice for the second L, so I'll just copy paste that. Um, okay, and then uh, what do I want for the lowercase o? What is that one? 6f. Okay, well, yeah, because L, M, N, O. Yeah. How many of you guys, so when I was real little, I thought L, M, N, O was a single letter. Right? Because, you know, now it's like four letters. Oh, they did? So that LMNO isn't a single letter? Oh. Okay, well. Yeah. Um, all right, anyway. So 6F, and then of course in binary that would be, oops. Um, that part starts the same, and then F is all ones. Okay, so you guys kind of get the idea here, right? It's a little annoying, um, but you just do it letter by letter. Uh, and so let me let me just skip here, and let's instead of saying our entire string is hello world, let me just say it's hello. Okay, and that's it. So what would happen at the end of a string? Uh, if you're programming in C or something like that, low-level stuff, uh, is the null terminator would be at the end here. And its encoding 
is all zeros, hence why it's called the null terminator, because right? it's yeah all zeros. And that would tell, uh, that would be something that you could use when you're writing a program to determine when you've come to the end of a string. Now, notice in particular that the space is not the same as the null terminator, right? The space has a different encoding. That's good because that allows you to know the difference between just a blank and the end of something. Um, okay, so is that, that good? Yeah? All right, so um, we can do, so let me actually do something kind of a little different here. Um, let me save this real quick and let me go into, put this in this semester's class just to save it for posterity and let's do, let's see, well, Okay, so don't worry about the details of what I'm typing here. Um, so all I'm doing here is just typing a, uh, a simple program, okay, that doesn't really do too much. Um, um, all it's going to do is print hello world to the console. Okay, so then I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal and let me make sure that everybody at home can see what I'm doing here. Um, okay, terminal, window capture. Um, Okay, there we go. Okay, so I just opened up a terminal and what I'm gonna do is, um, okay. Um, let me blow the font up a little bit so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Uh, so let's see. I want to preferences, um, general, no, profile, change. Let's make it. Okay, is that better? Yeah, good. Okay. Um, all right. So um, I've got this simple program that I wrote. And um, let's see. So let me assemble it. What? Uh, what did I forget this time? Uh, no, it takes, it's a outputs an int, but it takes in a void. Oh, God, I always screw this up. It's, it's void that way. Yeah, my bad. Okay. Um, All right, so the, um, actually, you know what, that's not what I want. I want to then do, um, oh, they don't have that one in this. That's annoying. Eh, okay, that's annoying. Um, 
all right, so let me actually just do um, Okay, so what this what I just did was I made an executable. So if I run it, it will say hello world. Okay, great. All right, nothing particularly special. Um, but what I'm going to do is this is what the program actually is. Right? That looks like a whole bunch of gobbledygook. Right? Um but in particular, our string should be in there somewhere, right? The program's not psychic. It doesn't know what we want it to, to print. So that string or the, the hello business uh, is in here somewhere. So let's see if we can find it. Uh, so what was, what was the capital H again? Four, eight. And then what was the next thing? Six five. All right. So what we're looking for is four eight six five uh, in our little our output here. So there's the four eight. Uh, keep going. Anybody happen to see it? It's in here somewhere. All right, well, so let me do some voodoo here. What? Um, where? Oh, I think you said here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay, 4865, 6C, 6C. Those are the two L's. 6F was the, uh, the O, then a space, 2, 0. And then world, okay, continues here. W, O, R, L, D, exclamation point, and... Null Terminator. Okay, so great. It's exactly what we thought it was going to be. Yes. Why is it like in our stuff? Oh, that is literally the program. Okay, so I just wrote this stupid thing that just prints "Hello World" to the console. That's it. Um, so the what you're seeing is. Okay, this is kind of hard to explain. Um, what you're seeing is the actual executable file. So what I did was I did a hex dump on it, which all it does is it takes, it's a file with a bunch of stuff in it and just prints all of that in hexadecimal. Okay, and now a lot of, the, this is what's fun or annoying, depending on how you want to look at it. Sometimes, a pattern like 4865 might mean a machine instruction to tell the machine to do something. Other times it means, well, it's just a string, okay, a piece of text, or maybe it's a number or something like that, right? So the, the I guess the point here is that um, just putting something in hex or binary doesn't attach any particular meaning to it. That's up to us. Right, and then we have to know what to put where. Okay, so why is that 4 8 stuff in that particular spot? Well, because a program generated this, right? A program called a compiler. I took source code, I ran it through this magic program called a compiler that spits out machine instructions, and this is actually what the computer executed. Okay. Um, so a lot of that stuff is machine instructions. A lot of it is also just data, like in this case, the string, okay? And you'll notice that um, the there's lots of places where it's just a bunch of zeros uh, for a good chunk. Well, that's kind of to space things out. Um, so also you see those stars 
right? So like uh, between here and here, what does this star mean? Well, what what did what did zero what did this line look like? It was all zeros, and so all of them between there and there are the same. So the this little program is smart, and it says, okay, if it's going to be a bunch of rows that are all the same, I'm not going to print all of them explicitly because that would be kind of annoying. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, our strings there. Um, and uh, starting there and ending here. So hello world with the null terminator at the end. Okay. Kind of cool, hopefully. Okay. Now the voodoo that I just did in terms of writing a little program in C to print this out and the, the magic stuff I was typing in the console. Don't worry about that. Um, those of you who want to be CS majors, anybody? Yeah? Oh, believe me. <laughs> You'll be doing plenty of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this actually, um, I, I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but that's okay. Um, so sort of a preview of coming attractions. Um, how is it that a machine actually executes stuff? Right. This is literally a program. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros. Well, one of the things that we'll do kind of later on in the course, this will be sort of the towards the end of it, is we'll talk a little bit about machine architecture and some of the circuit level stuff that makes a computer really, really work. Um, like in a in a bit more high level than, say, single transistor, but um a bit lower level than something like Java or C. And we'll write programs, and you guys are going to be spitting out stuff that looks like this. All right, now, it won't be nearly as long as this, fortunately, um, and things will be simplified considerably because uh, we're going to do it for a pretend machine, not the real machine uh, that, that we use normally. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll see a lot more of this sort of stuff later. Um, okay, so let me let's just kind of recap here. Any questions about how we did the encoding of the string? Okay, yeah, Cole. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. So most of what that is is. Um, uh, <clears throat> the printing function, right? We have to either link to it someplace else or embed a little copy of the part of the program that does the printing. It looks like it was a single line in my source code, but really there's a whole bunch of crap there, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that is sort of the funny thing, right? Is it looks like a whole lot more complicated than it ought to be for just a simple program that does hello world, but yeah, um, yeah, um, okay, but does the idea then of you just read off the ASCII table what you need, um, you know, kind of make sense, uh, now the thing that's mildly annoying with, uh, so there, there's that, uh, the ASCII assignment on Canvas, is uh, pay attention to the directions for how to format it because Canvas is picky. And I tried to come up with a formatting scheme that, that makes it as easy as possible to type, but also makes it readable, right? Because if, if, if you just typed in 100 ones and zeros in a row, like good luck finding a, a mistake. Okay, so what I would recommend you guys do when you work on it is open up a text editor, it doesn't matter, word, who cares, right? And do it like a single line per letter um, and then copy paste and stuff like that. So, but just pay attention to the format uh, instructions in the, um, in the Canvas assignment so that it's as painless as possible. The other thing about the Canvas assignment is uh, I didn't include the null terminator, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, yeah, okay. Um, all right, so any, any other questions about ASCII? 
Hopefully not too bad, right? Oh, uh, let's see. We got a nice comment here. We are not seeing the code. Just this thing that says login. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm sorry, guys. Let me see if I can figure out why that's the case because I picked the wrong window. Um, all right. Let me switch to the other terminal window. There you go. Okay, this is what you should have seen. And uh, so what I've got there is the row that, or the stuff that I've got highlighted is the uh, the ASCII for Hello World um, just hidden there inside the program. So, sorry about that. Um, okay, good. Um, Anything else uh, or questions about ASCII? Okay, Gucci. Uh, what about other stuff? Any other kind of questions that have just been burning in your hearts? Got a little bit of leftover time. No? What is the meaning of life? Hmm? So you have 42, right? Everybody should know that. Yeah. Um, of course, the, the real question is, is it 42 or 42 in hex? Mm. Mysteries of the universe. Um, okay, no question, preguntas, or, and or fragans? No? All right, well, if you guys don't have questions, then beat it. Um, we'll see you guys Wednesday, and we'll start some new stuff. Uh, what about you guys online? Uh, any any questions? Uh, I'll just hang out here for a minute, see if there's anybody online's got a question for me. So, like we have the uh, the mamas and the papas, I I should put on Michael Jackson while you guys are leaving, right? Beat it. Beat it. No. All right. Have a good rest of your Monday. All right. Doesn't look like we got any more questions online, so I'll uh, I'll cut the stream here. And uh, you guys, if you do end up having questions, just let me know, and I'll catch you guys whenever.